professionals used to hold knowledge to ransom, if you will. The reason you came to me as a professional was because I knew the law. I knew what was supposed to be debited and credited. I knew, you know, because I had all these big books behind my, you know, leather upholstered desk, <laughs> fancy office, you know. And that was that was what you paid for. Whereas, as you say, I think Google is probably the most impactful <laughs> of the entire profession because your client doesn't need you to tell them what the definition of an asset is because a quick Google is going to be, is going to give them YouTube videos, tutorials, basics, simple, you know, for idiots, for how to means and you're like, I mean, there's a million solutions and a million different, you know, results from you know, one search. What do they need your definition for? They need a solution to their bespoke individual right. problem. If right. they've got a property that's overseas, and that property that's overseas has burnt down and they have an insurance claim. Now, that is a complex set of right. accounting issues. It right. involves an understanding and application of ISA 21, that it's a non-monetary asset that wouldn't be retranslated. It involves an application of ISA 36 impairment. Mm. Now the asset has burnt down. Mm. It, it's no longer, it's due a, an impairment review. Mm. It, in, it, it implies that they need to bring in ISA 37 um, because they've got an insurance claim. So, yep. so students need to know the standards. They need to know the definitions. Don't get me wrong. They need yeah, yeah. to know the definitions. But at the final level, at the professional level, it's not about an asset is impaired when the carrying value exceeds the recoverable <laughs> amount. It's not about the definition of a contingent asset is. It's about seeing a yeah. quasi cartoon real life client problem mm -hmm. that the client can't key that in to Google and get an answer. Yeah. The client needs yeah. the accountant to join the dots. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and use the judgments. Yeah. And, and synthesize. And it's very easy the way that we're taught or the syllabus unfortunately but understandably to some extent is siloed you know it isn't in isolation so it's, most of my students will study again understandably I'm not it's I'm not judging it's just it's not really the best way to do it is today I'm learning impairments tomorrow I'm learning investment property and there's never really time to integrate this properly because your client is not going to come to you and go, I have a problem with an impairment. They're expecting you to say building burnt down and you tell me what's going on. And they're expecting you to say, okay, this is going to be the impact on whatever bond or mortgage you have over it. This is going to be the impact on the accounting. This is going to be your tax implications. This is going to be your cash flow implications. This is going to be what the auditors want to see, or this could be your risk as far as tax is going. So you know, your client is not going to nudge you and go, okay, so tell me about, um, you know, tell me about the, you know, the provision or the contingent liability here. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> your client doesn't know this stuff exists, you know? You, you use the word silo, and that, that's a word that I use too. That's part of my, that's part of my vocabulary. And, and you're right, in the early days of teaching, you do need to dedicate some time to look yeah. at a particular standard as a silo. However, one of the things that I bang on about to my students is the framework, mm -hmm. is the conceptual framework. Mm -hmm. And I find that if students have an understanding of the conceptual framework, what is relevant, yeah, what is faithful representation, what is an asset, what is a liability, it helps them with their problem solving. Mm. And I do try and tease my students as much as possible during those silo right. lectures right. about impairment. I will try and throw in, mm. is there a cash flow going on here? Yeah. How would, you know, I do try yeah. and throw in, what's the deferred tax yeah. implications <laughs> of writing this asset down? <laughs> and it annoys them. It exactly. annoys them. I'm it in does. their yeah, face. Yeah. I'm in yeah. their face. Yeah. But, I don't know. It's not always a popularity contest. For me, I find the frustration comes from that immediate impression of, is this going to be an exam? And am I supposed to know the answer for this? And you know, we're approaching it from a, let's help you think about this. Like you don't have yeah. to have the answer straight away. You know, I'm not, you know, it's, it may even be a rhetorical question, but like, 
I just want to tease, like you say, tease. I just want to train your brain a little broader than that. And I think, you know, the students are going like, oh, crap, is this going to be an exam? Do I have to know this? Am I supposed to know this? Where was this? I didn't see this in the pre-reading. And I think Yvonne, that panic Yvonne, 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 it, it, we, we, we're guilty. I'm guilty. The, 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 the education profession is guilty of training um, accountants at the lower levels, at the introductory levels, that there is a right and wrong answer. Yes. Because there is a debit and there is a credit. And there's nothing more satisfying than getting a balance sheet to balance. Right. right. And if you're at work, you have to get the answer right. And they have to get that tax computation right and whatever. But as we move towards the qualifying stage, as we move towards the, the, the master stage, as we move towards being a profession, we increasingly have to make sure our students understand that accounting is an art yeah. And not a science. Yeah. Yeah. The, the judgments and ethics involved yeah. in choosing the, in estimating the life of the asset, in choosing our accounting policies, have a direct impact on the measurement of profit and how that is communicated to stakeholders. Mm. Mm. So there is a, within the journey of a, of a qualifying accountant, within the journey of a, of, of, of a student, in the beginning, it's two plus two equals four. Yep. But in the end, it's all what you want it to be. You know, <laughs> um, and, 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 and that, 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 there's almost at the final level, the same knowledge that you've got in your head. Yeah. But, but, but it's, it is about reorganizing yeah. and creating new pathways. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. in the exam that I'm predominantly teach, which is the sort of qualifying ACCA exam, there's no accounts preparation. There's no accounts preparation. They've done that before. Right. So they're being asked to interpret the accounts, explain the accounts. Mm. They're, being, they're, they're, they're assuming to be the finance director, the partner. Yeah. Yeah. Because let's face it, who does prepare the accounts? It, it, it's, it's, it's not the CFO, it's, right? It's, it's Mrs. Spreadsheet yep. or Mr. Spreadsheet, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it's the computer yeah. that, that is gathering the data, churning it out, and it's a few buttons that are pressed. Mm. And then someone mm. has to step back and say, do you know what, which policies should we choose? Mm. Or, or oh, 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 we've just got a litigation come through. Or we've mm. just, you know, a week after the year end, somebody's suing us. Is that an adjusting post balance sheet event? Mm. And, and so that's, that's what we want the professionals. As you were saying earlier, the role of accountants as we are training our highly skilled individuals to be, is not a bookkeeper because because the bookkeepers that, that that data processing role with artificial intelligence is largely is largely going. Yeah, yeah. It's being replaced with how do you interpret this data? We've yeah. got much more data. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. So to to computers cannot understand. Um the numbers computers cannot understand how other people will react to the numbers mm. and and when you look at a set of accounts one page the PL, one page the balance sheet mm. one page the cash mm. flow mm. and look at all the notes mm. look at all the sustainability yeah. reporting yeah yeah look at all that now that word they're words yeah they're words the company is, is trying to communicate with the stakeholder and and, and numbers don't capture the full story. They yeah. Never capture the full no, story. It doesn't give context and or background or doesn't give context or background. Right. And and we as accountants are are more communicators mm. than we are counting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we are. We should be. We Go should be. We, we are hundred percent. I think when I talk to my students and when I when I mentor my students, I'm always saying, you know, there's three elements to whatever you're doing as a professional is um your knowledge, like your base of knowledge or your knowledge base, whatever that may be, um, your application and your communication. And if you have only two of those three, it's pointless, like it's meaningless. Nobody, I don't care what you know if you can't explain it to me. You know, you can't sit there and say to me, trust me, Yvonne, I know what, you know, like, okay, but could you share that? <laughs> like, you know, um, and I don't care what you know, if you can't apply to my situation. So the education system in earlier levels hasn't caught up yet with the shift in thinking that professionals need 
because the earlier levels yeah, are designed to focus on and prioritize knowledge alone. You know, and there's a lot of my students have this idea that there's an automatic connection between knowing something and being able to use it, you know, being able to apply and communicate it. So, you know, if I knew the standard better, if I knew you know, an impairment standard better, then I would be able to apply it to any situation, you know, answer any questions and communicate anything. And I'm like, that, you know, there's no, there's no magic link there. The one doesn't automatically create the other. They're separate skills. They are separate skills. So you're right, you, they, they, students have to go through an, 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 a knowledge phase. And, and in some ways, that's a hygiene factor. In yep. some ways, that's, that's, that's uh, um, you know, mm. underneath the water and, and, and yeah. assumption. Mm. 